okay so so far we have discussed only uh, authorization code flow or code flow right we discuss only authorization uh, uh, code flow right in in all, all previous sessions and we also understand how we uh, use the jot token to securely uh, transfer the authorization from the resource owner to the client now this r 2.0 has different way to grant uh, this access right so one of the way is authorization code flow or author authorization grant type right now we have other uh, four or five types of uh, different grant types that we can discuss but i'm going to focus uh, or discuss uh, two more grant types that we normally use in the integrations right and commonly use right and then there are other that you can um, uh, look into or find explore by yourself right now next grant type is implicit grant type you can see here this one implicit grant type right now implicit grant type is very much similar to the uh, authorization grant type or authorization code flow except one small change and that small change is in implicit grant type we do not have uh, we do not use the token endpoint except that everything remains same means authorization endpoints provides the access token okay now let's discuss it but before that let's understand where this grant type is normally used right so this grant type is normally used in clients or uh, in applications where we can maintain the user id password or the client id client secret if you remember in our uh, code uh, code flow right when your client sends the request to token uh, endpoint it sends its client id and client secret which your authorization server validate right and it was client was able to do it because it was done by the back channels means uh, client uh, say suppose uh, from its uh, servlet or from from its uh, action class in 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 the in the server sends the request to token endpoint and then while sending the request it can use the client id and client secret but if we do not have that server side code we have only uh client side code which means we have only html pages uh which have only javascript html pages with the javascript so no one want to use or store their user id password or the client id client secret in the json json file and the reason is simple uh, if you have your user id password client id client secret in the in, in the in the json anyone can open it and see it if you do so you don't want to do that right so in implicit grant type which is used on the clients like the javascript where we cannot uh, secure or place or uh, client id and client secret right we use the implicit grant type and in 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 in, in implicit grant type client sends the request to auth token uh, auth endpoint to the author, uh, on the authorization server and gets the access token directly right like in the auth code flow your authorization server returns the auth code and then client use the auth code to get the access token from here that is not the case except that everything remains same right so which means resource owner say suppose want uh, your client 
i mean a resource owner want to say suppose uh, say suppose resource owner want to access uh, a particular resource which is available on on some different server it's not available on the client server right like we discuss in our example not is the the google drive right is not available on the draw.io uh, application or on on the uh, draw.io server it is available on the google server right so in that case right client has to get the resource owner's permission to access that resource so resource owner's resource owner has to transfer his auth authorization to the client so that client use that authorization to access the protected resource on the uh, uh, protected resource server so in that case same thing happened what we uh, what we uh, un uh, understood in the code grant flow which means client will ask the re resource owner that if you want if you authorize me right or if you uh, uh, authorize or yes if you authorize me i can access the uh, protected resource or your google account on your behalf but it can be done only if you authenticate yourself and authorize me to act on your behalf to work on a limited uh, resource uh, work on your uh, limited resources with limited access so if resource owner says okay you can do it then the client will send a request to auth endpoint right now when it, this request will send it will send its client id to identify himself to the authorization server right and everything same exact same thing repeat, uh, repeated it will uh, uh, provide its uh, redirect url client id uh, and and uh, scope right and all the other information that we discussed right after that your auth server right uh will perform the same step that we discussed in uh, discussed previously in the auth code flow it will send a form right your google uh, server will send a form to identify or to prove the user that uh if he's he's saying he's j then prove that you are j enter your user id password right once user enters his user id password that will go and click the submit button uh, that information will go to the uh, authorization server on the google uh, google's authorization server authorization server will validate that user id password and then it will ask for the um, consent right that uh, mr x or mr uh, dot io want to x uh, is requiring access to place files in your google drive or to read the files from your google drive do you want to allow or deny if you say allow if user say allow that will go to authorization server and then the our server will send another request right for the confirmation if user confirms that request as well this information will go to the uh, authorization uh, server and it see that okay that client uh, resource owner has authorized it right and he has confirmed it as well so it is safe to grant the access on behalf of resource owner to the client which means dot dot io so in this flow the only difference is instead of generating the auth uh, code it will directly generate the access token right and it will generate the access token and it will send that access token in the redirect URI as a query parameter to the client right now the access token how that access token look like it will be JWT token right it will be JSON uh, web token right now we discussed we have discussed in our previous session that how uh, jot token jot token look like and how it works how it provides the security and all the details so 
you need to uh, watch the previous session right once your client get the jot token right it will send that jot token to the protected resource protected resource will validate the signature of the uh, jot token and if the signature is valid it will provide access required as access to the client all right so this is how your implicit grant type work the only difference is um the and only difference is access token is provided by the auth endpoint no request is sent to the token endpoint right and the reason i have already explained so this is very similar to your authorization code flow right and uh, one thing uh, uh, th th that uh, we need to remember in this case that your uh, response type that you send in the request right you, you uh, i hope you remember uh, response type right we send the response type uh, when we send uh, when your client send the first uh, request to the auth endpoint right sends uh, client id redirect uh, redirect url right it also send the scope beside that it also it it, it also um, send one parameter called the response underscore type and the value of response under underscore uh, type in case of implicit grant type is token right in case of authorization code flow or co uh, the value of the response uh, underscore type was code right so that is another difference that you need to remember right so this is this is about the uh, implicit grant type okay thank you